Hey, good afternoon, everybody. The uh, Kings are in New York, and they are getting ready to take on the Knicks tomorrow. Uh, latest injury report, uh, Josh Hart is questionable with a sprained right wrist, as is Mitchell Robinson. Uh, for the Kings, like, you know, it's really up to what they're doing, I think, more than their opponent. I think, guys, when you look at this four-game road trip, tomorrow is such a key because it gives you a legitimate chance of going two and two on this trip. I'm just going to say they're not going to win in Boston, and I think it's going to be difficult to win in Oklahoma City. So the Knicks and the Nets, Ryan and Jerry, you know, those are the games. Ryan, let's start with you. Yeah, it's the two on the schedule that you look at, and you might say down the road, Phoenix and New Orleans is more important, but these two really are because it could be the stop to what could be a big skid for this team. And it's big for their confidence, too, not just for the schedule. They're integrating new guys in that have not played for a while, and new guys are getting minutes that weren't getting minutes earlier in this season. Jerry, the Kings are facing a New York team that's lost three in a row and are really desperate for a win because the Knicks are kind of in the same position as Sacramento, not necessarily for making a playoffs, but for playoff seating and home court. This is a huge game for the Knicks tomorrow. Yeah, it really is. I mean, and so, you know, they'll bring whatever they've got. I, I mean, I do wonder, I mean, it's a case where they thought OG Ananobi would be back in full tilt, which I mean, really the history of him, he misses, a lot of games has every year for, since he's been in the league, you know, one of those guys, when he plays, he's really good, but you know, playing 50 games a year doesn't really feed the bulldog either. And, uh, and then of course, Randall, so the, you know, two of their top four guys aren't there, but they played, they play hard every night. And, and, uh, you know, of course, Brunson and D Vincenzo and, but I not having heart, that's a key because that uh, yeah, would be huge. I mean, huge. he's a consistent double-digit uh, rebounder and a good defender, just a winner, real baller. And he's a workhorse. He played yes. 46 minutes last night, and they lost to Miami. Yeah, so, Mike, so this is – I mean, you'll get uh, – you know, with Thibodeau's team, you know it's desperate. And you'll get the best effort they have with the talent maybe a little bit limited. But, you know, I, I kind of think, depending on – we'll see with Boston, they're so far ahead – you know that they mm. couldn't be they could lose every game and and still sew up uh, a number one in the west if not the overall number one i mean they'll have to win a couple more games to have if if they might start resting some guys and so they probably will but it probably it, won't be this week yeah and it probably won't be Tatum and Brown <laughs> right yeah <laughs> so yeah jerry what do you think of momentum for a team like that they've been rolling they have a chance to, you know, they not, not have a chance. They will. They're gonna. They're gonna be a sixty-win team. And I remember when the Kings were back then. Uh, the guys didn't want to take the foot off the gas pedal. Now I know this is a different era, and load management, and all this other crap is looked at differently. But I gotta believe that the players in that locker room want to keep going and keep the momentum. I, I don't know for sure, but I, I would just think that they want to keep that thing going full steam ahead in Boston. I, I would think so. I, I would be surprised if they do anything other than maybe the last game or two of the season. Exactly. And, and you know, really go easy on the minutes uh, the next to last game and then really almost no minutes the last game because, uh, you know, they're going to have the number one seed all the way. And then and that the next most important thing after getting number one seed, having your main guys rested and healthy. Well, yeah. Yep. Yeah. First things first, though, Rhino, Knicks, and this is a winnable game when you look at the Knicks injury report. And again, New York's lost three in a row, uh, but I can tell you the Garden is going to be jumping tomorrow. I was reading the tabloids earlier today about the, the even, even they are building up this game tomorrow as they're labeling it almost like as a must win for the Knicks to retain home court advantage in the playoffs in the first round. Well, that is that is the King's luck. It's either good or terrible, and that's not great. <laughs> um, I, I, all eyes for me, we know Brunson, he's a problem. The, the Kings, I think, can do a better job than they did last game on him, but Dante DiVincenzo, watch the heck out for him. When he is on, he's on. He had 31 the other night, and he is the perfect type of player to be a King's killer. And, and he really has been a uh, uh... A good offense. We were late. He had a 40 point game, you know, 11 threes, uh, one game. Uh, but he's a little bit streaky, but his streak the last month has been good. And he's a, but he and Brunson 
really that those are the guys. I mean, they for the Kings to to win, if they could hold those two guys together to under forty, I think the chances are around forty. I think the Kings' chances are great. And here's the other thing that we need to talk about because the Kings are playing this physical brand of basketball, or at least they say they are or want to be. Eric Hartenstein, he had a quiet game last time against Sacramento. Watch out for him. He bangs inside, and he does a lot for that New York team, Grant, that a lot of people don't give him enough credit for. He does. And, you know, New York, uh, even more so than many other cities, is a star-studded back of the page, you know, post daily news, the big name. And with that Knicks team, it's been Brunson, 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 you know, with the, with Randall being out and he gets all the attention. And sometimes we don't talk a lot about the other players like a Dante DiVincenzo, as you brought up. So I, I think there's a lot of truth to that, Jerry. I mean, in New York, the stars get all the publicity and sometimes, you know, the, 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 the role players kind of get swept under the rug from a media perspective. Oh, there's no doubt. And I mean, and, and Jalen uh, Brunson deserves every bit of it. I mean, I'd put him in a short list of MVP candidates. I mean, the guy's been uh, tremendous and uh, has carried that team, and especially without Randall, a good part of it. But uh, as you say, they've got some, they, you know, they get great mileage out of Hartenstein, you know. I mean, he's a, yep. t- he, he, he's a tough, tough cut. Co- Actually, he's a tough matchup for Domas because he's maybe – a little bigger and more physical, if anything. He he really uh, will uh, kind of – he stings the guys and sets great screens. Kind of one of those underrated uh, good centers in this league. All right, here's a question. What are your guys' impression of Thibodeau, and why aren't more coaches defensively oriented? Uh, I've only told – and I know Tom Thibodeau, and uh, I've had many conversations with him. And I, I find the guy to be fascinating to talk to. But he's not the easiest guy in the world to play for. He is ultra demanding. He's kind of old fashioned, you know, and he's been around with the Bulls Uh, in Minnesota. He had issues. Uh, A lot of the players, you know, had issues with him. And, you know, he was on the hot seat in New York and really, I think, was on the hot seat in New York even going into this year. But the Knicks have played very well. Jerry, you know Tibbs, too. Um, He's got old school, old fashioned type of a coach. And again, he's not for everybody. Oh, absolutely. I've known him since he was a coach at Roanoke College. And wow. Was, I mean, uh, he was a hard-nosed rascal then, you know. And, and uh, I'll say this, the, the guys that buy in to Tibbs buy in. And uh, that's why he's, you know, always made sure he's had a couple of old Tibbs guys around, you know, to make sure they that uh, that uh, they know what they're getting into. And, and uh, so – but I, I, he's a terrific coach. And as to the question of why aren't more coaches, defensive coaches like him, well, they're not as dedicated as he is. I mean, that guy doesn't have a life. I mean, other than basketball. I Very mean, true. He is, he is truly one of the, maybe the most driven coach yep. that I've seen. And, and certainly his personality does carry over to his team. And as you said, Grant, I mean, some guys uh, don't like it, but then again, some guys do, and, and you get the Brunsons and the Hearts and the De Vincenzos. You're getting some hard-nosed guys who like that, <laughs> and uh, I don't think it's a coincidence either. By the way, that those three guys all played for Jay Wright at Villanova. Well, another, another no nonsense, uh, uh, bring it every night, or, or or don't bring it. Yeah, and I bet that's a locker room where Coach Tibbs does not need to mention 50-50 balls when you have players like that. They are just bred that way. They see a ball on the floor, they dive for it. Yeah, speaking they're, they're, of that, they're 100 balls. <laughs> they're 100 yeah. balls. <laughs> you know, speaking of that, we saw this two weeks ago when these two teams played, uh, and we got a lot of complaining at the end of the game about the officiating, which, got to be honest, happens a lot, but – I think the way this game called tomorrow is going to be important, Jerry, because the Knicks are the most physical team in the league. And, you know, if they, if, if the officials are allowing them to play defense the way they want to, that makes life even more difficult. Well, it will be a key. You're absolutely right. And it's going to be physical, that's for sure. Now, what level of physicality and when do they call calls? Now, having said that, I think the Kings have to go into the game knowing that. Okay. You know, bring your put your hard hat on and and uh, quit bitching and understand you're going to get spanked here and there and uh, go play and uh, don't spend too much time worrying about a call that you thought should be made. 
that's one of the advantages that the Knicks have. They just as a team, they they get into guys' heads because they are a little physical, a little extra, uh, this and that. And so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the Kings. Uh, I way I would approach it is, hey, you're going to get a good whistle, go play. Well, yeah, I'll tell you. You're speaking of playing, Ryan, De'Aaron Fox. He loves playing in the garden. I think Jerry, when Jerry uh, and me were calling the games and the Knicks won, they had a nice run there beating the Knicks. And it seemed like we had De'Aaron Fox on the postgame show sitting with us courtside after all the games because he 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 loves playing. Most players do, but he just thrives, it seems like, at Madison Square Garden, Rhino. They need an A-plus game from him. Well, the uh, table is set for him. You already talked about the uh, fan and media affair right now in New York City. So De'Aaron's got to perform, and he's got to find a way, regardless of whether the ball's in his hand or not, to distribute. Because if I'm Coach Tibbs, my game plan is centered around De'Aaron Vox and Domas. Even though Keegan Murray, great shooter, even though Harrison can light you up once in a while, even though Keon can make an open three, those are the only two players I'm worried about. Jerry? Well, yeah, that that's who they're going to focus on, and and on that on that note, without Josh Hart available, I think Keegan could have a big game, and I and I'd be trying to find him uh, a lot uh, to get him shots. Uh, you know, we've seen the last couple of games without Malik Monk. He is does seem to be more aggressive and and looking to score the ball, and uh, I th- I think he'll. He'll have the opportunity, I, I think, uh, maybe more than Domas and De'Aaron because they're going to be the focus, and uh, he might be the guy that could slide in there and get 20, 25. Mm. And we should point out, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Josh Hart has not been ruled out. He's listed as questionable. Well, I want him out. So. Yeah, but, I mean, you said without Josh Hart. I don't want to confuse the <laughs> yeah, fan. Yeah, okay, yeah, good yeah, point. You know, yeah. Jerry, I, Jerry's talking wishful thinking, but the <laughs> – yes, uh, yes, he is. Yes, he as is. As of right now, uh, he is questionable. You know, a sprain right wrist seems pretty bad to me, but, you know, again, I don't know where he injured that last night. He pl- almost played the entire game, but, you know, that's – I'm only going by uh, the next injury report. But I've been saying this, and I'm going to continue to say this. You know, with seven games left, you can't really worry about what's going on in the other house. You you really can't. I mean, this is truly a time of the year where you just got to concentrate on what you're doing. You all got to be together. And and players like Harrison Barnes and 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 the other players, they just need to play to their ability. Jerry, I think one thing's very apparent, and we didn't talk about this enough, and that is the impact that Trey Lyles has when he's available to Mike Brown. Yeah, very important player, and, and you know, doubly important now that uh, Malik Monk is out and Herder's out. So they're a little thinner. He's going to get more minutes. Uh, he can play a couple of spots and uh, he's got some toughness about him. Uh, certainly can make shots. Yeah, no question. Uh, real key off that bench. And, and I think uh, Coach Brown really is, the bench is even more important now because, you know, you need more guys producing like we saw last night because Monk, you know, Monk was the guy that, basically produced about 90 percent of the production from the bench and now yeah they, it was close they need to get more and they're and they're getting it i mean i i mean davion and uh and trey lyles i mean alex lynn i mean i think alex lynn could be a real a, a bit of a factor in this game as well i think we saw that uh, coach brown's trying to play him about an extra four to six minutes uh because uh he, he is very productive and brings some real physicalness to the game. And he and Hartenstein, they could be wallowing around in there exchanging fouls, you know, which would be good. Yeah, and Len had, um, I believe, uh, for, he had a lot of blocks last night. I'll just leave it at that. But here's my question for you, Jer. Last night, is Alex Len or could Alex Len be a rim protector? Or was that more of the Clippers' bad schedule, tired legs, and Alex Len took advantage of it? No, I think he can. I mean, he, he's not going to be Wimbanyana or some, uh, but uh, he's physical. He's got good timing. Yeah, he'll block shots. And, and he's, and you know, when he's uh, basically a back, he doesn't worry about foul trouble, which is good. You know, he's got six of them. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I like what they're doing there. You know, I'm not at all sure he and uh, Domas could play together a little bit in zones mm. for sure. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I mean – the guy knows how to play. I mean, we all kind of tend to forget that, you know, he was the fifth pick in the draft for a yeah. reason. I mean, now he certainly, you know, it hadn't worked out that way. But uh, the idea was that he'd develop into a top-level starting center and just 
that hadn't happened. But uh, anyway, I think Coach Brown feels starting yeah. to feel comfortable giving him more minutes. And I think Domas, it doesn't hurt his productivity. I, I think, you know, yeah. we yeah. saw, I think he'll still get his numbers in less minutes because even maybe more energy. Three hey, I want to tell you, oh, hang on a minute. I want to tell you about Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. They are a full-service veterinarian hospital. They serve the Foothills, Roseville, and the greater Sacramento area, whether it's dentistry, surgery, wellness care. They're dedicated to urgent care. Bottom line, when your pet needs to be seen, they're available. Advanced internal medicine, full surgical care. They've got the most modern technology, and they're very proud of their pain management protocols. That's Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital uh, in Roseville. Four-game road trip begins tomorrow uh, in New York. Uh, it's the Knicks followed by the Celtics. Now we talk about the schedule and I talk, I've been, I talked about this for a month leading up to the first Mavericks game because I thought that was ridiculous. The Kings have another horrible schedule at the end of this road trip. They, they are on the East Coast all week. They play Oklahoma City, okay? And then they fly home three hours and 15 minutes. One day off. One day off. Yep. Played New Orleans, and then the very next night, Phoenix, who's who's in town. I mean, again, another brutal job by the NBA. I don't understand these long road trips like the Kings had before Dallas, where you only have one day off. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. Yeah, it really is. And, and I mean, that, you know, that coming off a road trip is always so tough, regardless who you're playing and uh, just the time change and all. I mean, so many yep. really surprising games happen because of that you know the the only thing i wish i knew more about was what was the schedule open dates available yeah, given to the question. league for the schedule because that well that has... i think i think the first dallas game had to do with national tv uh because there was nothing going on at the arena on wednesday and thursday there's no reason why the kings and the mavs could not have played that first game the next day, because there was no nothing going on in the arena. That that was a TV type of a game. I believe that game was on TNT. Yes, yes, it was. So yeah, there well, you that, go. That, yeah, that's. I mean, obviously they they that's part of it. And like I say, I I always knew uh, years ago uh, back in the old arena uh, that pretty much they just made sure they had every open date was there. Uh, you know, and I think with Golden One, it seems to be a lot busier. And so that could could be a little bit of it. I mean, and I don't know if I were, you know, obviously the Kings and, and Golden One, you'd say put put the schedule to our advantage. Uh, you know, we'll change dates on the, everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I mean, guys, are we at the point in the season because the schedule is so brutal that you kind of have to look at the games and say the Celtics, if it's out of hand in the first half, you pull the dogs off and you gear up for your next one. I would. Yeah, I, I think you. I think that's a great point, uh, uh, Ryan. Because I mean, it's if if in fact as soon as you know you can't win the ball game or you have won it, yes, uh, the rest is is rest and health the most important things down the stretch here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, tomorrow is such a pivotal game. This is a season, a regular season defining road trip, kind of. I mean, th th this is, I mean, because at the end of this four game trip, we could not even be talking about six. I mean, it could be, it's not happening. So uh, if, I think if you just go two and two on this trip, then obviously you come home and, and you got to figure that New Orleans and Phoenix are must wins. That's the way I'm looking at it without even knowing what they're going to do. Now, both those teams play tonight. Phoenix plays tonight against Cleveland, and the Pelicans play uh, against the Magic. So, you know, you see what happens tonight. Tough games. But, yeah, they are tough games. But, you know, again, if you can go two and two in this trip, then you I think it's going to end up being you have to win those two home games to get six. I heard an interesting stat this morning. I was watching one of the NBA shows, and they're talking about that the Celtics – have a bigger gap between one and two than the, the in the West between one and 10. How about that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, which. How about that? That's, that's saying a lot, isn't it? That is really. Is a pretty good, yeah. doesn't it? Man. Hey, hey uh, Fosters and Paws, a group of animal advocates. Uh, they are awesome at what they do. Uh, they work very hard to save lives. They primarily focus on vulnerable dogs in shelters uh, and they, 
literally look at every family and every animal as individuals. They do a great job of teaching children at a young age uh, how to treat animals with respect that will have lifelong benefits. They are looking for adopters, donors, and fosters. Currently, they have puppies available for adoption. Just go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. That's fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. Very rainy weather greeting uh, the Kings upon arrival in New York. And we will see you uh, tomorrow. The Knicks, I'm telling you, regardless of who's going to be on the floor, the one thing we do know, the Knicks are going to guard you. OK, they are going to guard you and they may not have a lot of offense outside of Brunson and Devin Shinzo on the floor. But you better believe that you are going to have to work for every shot in the game tomorrow if you're Sacramento. Yeah, getting 100 points is going to be tough. You yep. know, you're going to earn every one of your baskets. And, uh, you know, the Ralph Lawler rule will come into it. I Ralph think. Lawler. It's first one yep. to 100 likely to win. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. And here's the other thing that the Knicks are going to do. They're going to frustrate you. Uh, you know that they will. They're going to probably get, get calls. So the Kings just have to keep their heads and they can't dribble too much. I saw too much dribbling last night. And if you do that against the Knicks, they will turn you over. Yeah. And, and it just makes, uh, that's exactly what they want you to do uh, is, dri is dribble, use up some of the clock trying to get shots as opposed to ball movement and people movement. That's uh, so the Kings really have, you know, they've really got to do get the ball moving, uh, certainly through Domas. And I think Domas has got to be better. Move it quicker. Uh, you know, if once once uh, they're going to send a double guy down on him, he's got to he's got to be quicker to adjust and get the ball out. So let me ask you guys this, though. I don't see as much DHO action going on. So if you're not doing a ton of DHO, why run the offense through Domas? Well, because uh, he's the best passer. Uh, it's not that it's not the saying now. I would say they probably ought to run more high uh, pick and rolls with Fox, in particular, and Domas. Uh, you know, because uh, I think that gives Fox certainly a chance to get easy shots as well as uh, find find other guys. Because that brings all the defensive attention to those two guys. It's going to leave guys open. But uh, and Ryan, explain yeah. explain to the folks that are watching that aren't familiar with that term what DHO means. Dribble, uh, DHO dribble handoff. So yeah. dribble handoff. Just yeah. clarifying for the folks that are on the stream that don't Thank know you, what Nicks. that means. Uh, you know, when you look at the West right now with the Rockets losing a couple games, we know who the 10 teams are going to be. The question is, what order are they going to be in? Currently, the Warriors are a, a game back in a loss column of the Lakers. Lakers are currently ninth. They're two back of the Suns and the Kings. I, I don't, because of tiebreakers, I don't see them moving up. Right now, it's still New Orleans, and I'm going to leave Dallas out of that. I, I just think it's New Orleans, Sacramento, and Phoenix fighting for the sixth spot. I think Dallas, with their schedule, is going to be in the top six. To me, it's New Orleans, Sacramento, and Phoenix. And tonight's going to go a long way in changing the standings. The Pelicans are 45 and 30, and the Suns are 44 and 31 tied with Sacramento. So, you know, you, when you're not playing, you will be looking at the scoreboard. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, and you know the other thing too with New Orleans now Ingram has been out forever. Yep. Of course, yep. that's been that's been his history as well. You know, he just, yep. he, he's a star type talent, but never, isn't available that much. And uh, you know the thing getting back to the dribble handoff, I thought it was a great point. I, but I do think that could be really used more now with Keegan. Uh, you know, it was, it, it was really. Yes. A great opportunity with that was Kevin Herter's right on and Domas, but I I think it, it really falls into place. I think Keegan Murray can utilize that very well. So Jerry Mike Brown, um, after Malik's injury, and we knew that he was going to be out for some time. He was asked about the pick and roll, and Grant. I'll ask you this too. Um, he talked about how big of a hit the pick and roll game takes without Malik, which we know, but you rarely see pick and roll. With De'Aaron and Domas. I mean, you'd see it all the time with Malik and yep. Domas. So mm -hmm. why is that? Is there a reason why that either of you see? Well, I'll let's go to the expert. Jerry can explain that. Well, yeah, I think, you know, to me, they shouldn't be running more with De'Aaron. Now, he's not as good a passer in it as uh, 
as a, as Malik was, and Malik had the really ability with little drop off passes and things, very difficult. I, I mean, but I do think where it would work for Domas and De'Aaron is it would really create the the easier opportunities to get those mid range shots. Yeah. For, for De'Aaron, you know, to, now the, the one of the reasons I think you still want to go through uh, Domas is it takes a lot of the ball handling pressure off De'Aaron, and so when he gets the ball, he's got a live dribble, and and that really is is a tremendous advantage. So, yeah, I, I like that, but I, I do think you, that they that's something they should use. Use it'll just be a little different; it won't be quite as effective in my mind. Mm. Well, as you look at the game tomorrow. If, if Hart is ruled out, and right now he's questionable with a sprained wrist, again, your table is set for you. I, I know it's a huge game for both teams, and the Knicks need this win badly because they've lost three in a row, and they're trying to get the fourth spot uh, in the East. But, I mean, if you look at, you know, their their injuries and you add Hart to that, I mean, if you're Sacramento, Rhino, you can't ask for a better situation. Nope, absolutely not. Keon Ellis only played 20 minutes last game. So yep. that's also going to help out. I expect him to bounce back big time, Jer. And you got to watch out for the fouls on him. Like he fouled out last night in 22 minutes. And yeah. you know, a lot depends on how they're going to call that game tomorrow. Jerry, was that just a, to you a coincidence that Keon just kind of had a bad night? Or was that the talent on the floor that he was guarding? I think it's a little bit of coincidence. I mean, I, I think he is a lot on him, you know, a lot of little silly grabs and pull, you know, that just, is not like him, not good defense. So, and refs look for that sort of thing. So, but I, I, I'd be surprised if he doesn't play longer in a better game. I, he's going to get fouls, but Kings really need him because he certainly can match up with either guard. And, uh, and so, you know, with switches, he and De'Aaron and, and Davion, I mean, you know, with, with the guard line that's going to play a lot of minutes, I mean, they're, they're, you know, defensively pretty darn good right now. And, Quickness wise uh, can create, I think, create problems for both those guards. Uh, Brunson, I mean, Brunson will use his strength and toughness, but uh, he's not as quick as any of those three guys. Yeah, you know, one, one thing we should also point out: it's pretty, uh, it's pretty obvious. I mean, you have Denver, Minnesota, and Oklahoma City. They're going to be one, two, and three. Uh, the question is, in what order? So you pretty much know if you're Sacramento. If you make the playoffs, you're going to be playing one of those three teams because you're either going to be six, seven, or eight. All right, I'm ruling out five. I just don't think it's happening. So six, seven, and eight. And that means you're either going to play Denver if you're eight, Minnesota seven, or Oklahoma City if you're six. Now, that can all change, but those are your three opponents. So if I said to you, Ryan, out of those three teams, if Sacramento does get in, whether they're eighth seed, seven, or six, which team would you want to see in the playoffs out of those three? Minnesota every day of the week, and I would have wanted to see them even more before the town's injury. But I, I just think, and I know Anthony Edwards is a massive problem, and I am actually on record saying he is the freakiest athlete I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. He is. Um, they're playing well. They're playing well without towns. They've won eight of their last 10 games, Minnesota. Jerry, it, what do you think about those matchups? I don't want to, to me, Denver is the one. Denver's the one team I don't think the Kings could beat when healthy. I just don't think they can beat them I, I, I for, for a variety of reasons. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want to. They'd be the least of my choices. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I would probably tend to say Oklahoma City only because of their in, inexperience, total yeah. inexperience. I mean, uh, Minnesota's got a lot of guys who've been in playoffs and different things. And, uh, the, the, and, and to your point about uh, – Carl Anthony Towns, I think there again, that's where Nas Reed, they got a guy to step in there. And yep. He's not as good offensively, but he's better defensively. And, yep. and he plays and a role. Good. Yeah. I mean, now they lose depth. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, both those, I, the Kings could beat either of those, could beat either of those teams. And like I say, I, I think with Oklahoma City, the reason I, I would probably pick them because I think they they might be able to slow down Gilgis Alexander with the oh. three guards that are currently playing, you know, and and I mean just give him a tougher time. And if he has a tough time, I don't believe they can win. And I think on the other end of it, I I think kind of like the Ryan, I think Edwards is, is really a tougher cover just because of his athleticism and strength. I mean, he's not as good a player as Gilgis Alexander, but I think just for, for matchup purposes, he would uh, concern me more. 
He's freaky. Did you guys see the play where he pivoted, like half pivoted six times in the key before he shot a fadeaway? He's he's like a young LeBron, really. <laughs> freaky athleticism like that. I mean, certainly he, he he's not the talent that LeBron was at that age, but I mean, he he does those same kind of thing, uh, breathtaking. Unreal. <laughs> you know, breathtaking. <laughs> Well, it's uh, going to go right down to the wire. That is for sure. Hey, don't forget about Bennett's uh, three locations, Sacramento, Roseville, and the Blue Elks Town Center uh, in Rockland. Prime Seafood and Steak at Bennett's. Check it out. And don't forget about the weekend brunch, the weekend prime rib, 60 different types of wine available by the glass. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com to make a reservation or more. That's Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun here the next couple of games coming down the stretch. Seven games left, and again, scoreboard watching tonight. Phoenix uh, and New Orleans both in action. Pelicans playing the Magic. They're playing well, and the Suns playing the Cavaliers. Jerry, speaking of the Cavaliers and some of the other teams in the East, if there was one team in the East that could give Boston a difficult time, would it be the Knicks if, if they were healthy? They're not. But I'm just saying if you looked at the roster and included, you know, uh, the players that are out right now and put them on the floor. And again, I don't know if they're coming back. Would, would that be the only team in the East that you think could give a legitimate fight to the Celtics? Because I don't think Milwaukee's the team without Holiday. Now he's on Boston. I don't see it. Do you? I really, I don't see Milwaukee. I, I mean, and I don't know enough about Philly yet with Embiid just coming yep. back. We yeah. got that, that, that's a story uh, in the works, but I think, uh, but definitely, I think the Knicks, if they get their main guys, if they get OGN and OB and Randall back, uh, I mean, that, that's, that, that team could give them a tough go because I think they'll make scoring tougher on the Celtics. The other, the other team I would give a small shot, at least is, is the Miami heat because they're the Miami heat. That's all I got yep. to say, you know, and they've had a lot of injuries, but I mean, same thing. But uh, Bam out of bio and and uh, Jimmy Butler, I mean, uh, you know those guys, uh, those guys bring it and and, and they're well coached. So I, I think they yeah. could, you know, could scare uh, the Celtics. I like the Knicks better though. I like the Knicks. You know, if all things are equal talent wise, the Knicks are probably the only team that have a chance in my mind. Well, I don't think the Cavs do either. Ryan, another thing about tomorrow's game with the Knicks, they're one game back in a loss column of third place Cleveland. And if you're three, that means you can't play the Celtics until the the, the finals of the Huge. East. And, and if you don't think that's big right now in the East with Boston being light years ahead of everyone else, the difference between third and fourth is huge. All right. Because if you're four and you win your series or five, you play the Celtics in the next round, assuming they don't get upset. So, I mean, that that's another thing that Nick's got going for them. They, they, they do not want to be four. They mm -hmm. want to be three. Hey, well, Napes, we hope some politicking like that happens in the Western Conference, too, for the Kings. If they end up in the play-in, hopefully we get to play <laughs> who we want. But, yeah, um, they're going to take it serious because, it, to me, and we've talked about it, this year's playoffs in Boston, we've established this show as the best team in the NBA. They're just so wide-ass open. I mean, you just you need a ticket to the dance. The Warriors have won five in a row right now, gentlemen. Yep. Yeah, yeah they and the Lakers both are really playing well. Uh, you know, the team that's really struggling in the in the West is the Clippers. Yep. You know, and uh, we saw a little example of that last night. But, you know, I thought two months ago the Clippers really might be the one to, to give the, the Nuggets the biggest uh, challenge. But, yep. boy, uh, the way Harden looks right now and, and play off Paul, I mean, he it looks like he's in dreamland well, out there. Uh, so, God, I'm it, not – Guys, I'm not so convinced that, and to me in the West, I, I still think the Nuggets are at the top, but I'm not convinced that Dallas isn't the second best team, just talent and how far they could go in the playoffs in the West right now. They might be. Might be. Might be right now. And like I said, yep. you know, they're the team that at the break yes. uh, added two starters. What are you going to do against Jokic? Well, and, and so, they were pretty go ahead, good Jerry. Before. Yeah. All right, so we're talking about all different types of scenarios. Here's the way this is going to play out. If the Kings are not six or five, they're going to have to play either Phoenix or New Orleans 
in the first playing game in all likelihood. I'm gonna I'm not even including Dallas because I think they're not gonna be there. So your first opponent would be either New Orleans or Phoenix. If you lose that game, you then have to play the winner of the Lakers and the Warriors, who currently have won seven out of ten games, and as you guys said, are on a roll. Boy, oh boy, the play in this year is a is the real freaking deal. All right. If you have to go from playing the Suns, and if you lose that to playing the winner of the Lakers Warriors game to get into the playoffs, oh boy. Yeah, the one thing I'd say about the Lakers, I've watched them recently. Obviously, Kings have had success with them. Yeah, swept them. Honestly, they're I think they're better this year than they were last year. They're more talented. Why? Well, they've added, uh, you know, a couple of guys. A raw hook, they, uh, of course, added uh, uh, Huchamara. What uh, at the Hachimura? I got Hachimura. you. Yeah, I got really you, Jared. I got you, anyway, Jared. Jim Bob Bowley. Jim Bob Bowley. But uh, Hachimura at the trade deadline, and you know, he was just getting acclimated. He's he's fit in. Austin Reeves certainly a consistent kind of number three guy on that team. And I think Torian Prince has really found a niche for them uh, as a consistent off the bench Boy. guy who can defend. And, you know, the key that, you know, the one, the the thing you can't count on is D'Angelo Russell. But uh, the nights that uh, D'Angelo's making shots, they can beat anybody. And so. Well, you, you, you're, you're, you know, you, we know this because we live in Sacramento. You'd also have to beat the whistles in that game if you're playing the oh. Lakers. Or, uh, or, you know, that may be the toughest. <laughs> that may be the toughest part. That may be the toughest part. <laughs> you oh know, boy. You know, <laughs> oh boy, it's right. You know, you, you can avoid all of that by just being six, and you can go a long way in being six <laughs> if the Pelicans and the uh, Suns <laughs> lose tonight and you beat the Knicks tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about New Works Plumbing. They've got a fix for you for your plumbing needs and repairs. Just go to SacServicePlumbing.com. New Works Plumbing. They've got a fix for you. Uh, don't. We get 24-7 service, so they're available around the clock. SacServicePlumbing.com. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fix for you. I'm not uh, crazy about the concept of the play-in tournament, but I will say this. Just think about the interest that it's generating this year. The Warriors, the Lakers, probably would not be in the playoffs. And because of this, two veteran teams with superstars – now can get in and, you know, Grant, that, Grant, that, just think Grant, about that. Napes, Napes, stop, 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 stop. We're disrespecting the Lakers. We were talking about the in-season tournament champion Lakers. Can you imagine? <laughs> biggest storyline, Jerry, biggest storyline of your NBA career, the in-season tournament champions don't even make the playoffs. Oh, my Ooh. God. That, that boggles my mind, and my, my mind has been goodness. boggled for many years. But uh, yeah, but I I do I agree with Grant. I mean I I I initially did not like the idea of the play-in tournament, but I actually last year I really enjoyed it. I mean, and I think the league got it right. I mean, because it did create a lot of the you know the one game and out kind of stuff. You know, I always say the the biggest mistake in my mind the NBA has made over the years is is having a, the first round of the actual playoffs be best of seven. I've always thought ah. that, that's that's silly. I it mean, is silly. It needs to be best of five. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yep. you know, back years when I came to the league, it was even best of three. Best of three. Well, yep. What that did, that put, put some real emphasis on each game. You know, when yep. you have a national college championship one one game or you have the World Series, they don't play best of seven until the World Series, for God's sakes. And they play a 162-game schedule. Guys, yeah. could you know, we eventually could we eventually see buys? And everybody basically in in single eliminations. I, I'm being serious here because the NCAA tournament's thinking about expanding. They started with a play in. The NBA gets it. Are we? I don't think that so. Way? I don't think so. I don't think you can have teams like uh, the Wizards and the Pistons have a right to advance, even though they would be playing a team that would be much much better than them. I I personally think that would be bad for the sport. I think it would completely minimize. <laughs> The 82 game season. I so mean, isn't like, that isn't that where the buys come in though? So you would leave out there would be some. Yeah, but you triggers. know, teams don't teams don't like having that much time off, Ryan. They really don't. They don't like getting out of rhythm. You got to be careful of how they just don't. I mean, they That's don't. Fair. Well, 
I'll say this. I hope it never happens. Let's put it Me that too. I, Me too. I mean, really, I, I'd, I'd like to see some changes, and I'm okay with the play in now. So there's plenty of teams get a chance, and then yeah. they have to fight for the opportunity to actually be in the real playoffs. Uh, but, I, like I said, I, I just think the league is, is being kind of disrespectful for the, for the championship round. By, exactly. Uh, you know, by why should they – you know, one and eight have to play seven game schedule. I mean, uh, may, may get may not get to that, but uh, it should be the the championship should be best of seven, and the rest of them should be something less. Yep, I'm with you on that. Uh -huh. All right, so it starts tomorrow. The Knicks followed by the Celts, the Nets, and then the Thunder, and uh, we'll have the coverage for you here beginning tomorrow with the pregame. Early, all right. Uh, Kings on the west or east coast taking on the Knicks. Uh, Jerry, appreciate that. And uh, we'll chat with you tomorrow at halftime. Yeah, that, I, I like the early starts, you know. So uh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, that means early finish. So that that works for me. So uh, I'll bring my A game, guys. I hope I, I expect it. the same from you. Now I, ex I expect you to bring it too because I, I will. All right, Rhino. Don't mess have a good around. Evening. All right, thanks, have, Apes. All right, to everyone else. Thanks for joining us. Road trip begins tomorrow. Coverage right here on if you don't like that. So long, everyone.